Right then, I, I just thought to do you a quick update of me, uh, of me project I'm doing. Uh, this is the first time I've ever done a, a loco. I've just joined my model engineering club and uh, you'll have to bear with me because my terminology when I'm talking about things might not be quite right to you, especially to you experts that's out there. But I'm doing this really uh, fr from a, a beginner's point of view that's, that's never attempted to do anything like this before. Uh, so uh, it's really not for any any expert, it's just for people that's that's interested in having a go themselves perhaps. Now what I'm making, and you might, you might have seen a different picture on my first part, because to be fair, I've not decided fully what actually uh, shape it's going to take yet. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't quite decided. I've been concentrating on, on main chassis at the moment. So this I've taken I've taken these ideas from an uh, amalgamation of uh, different bits I've seen on internet, and uh, I've, I've got no working drawing as such. I'm just like I'm just like uh, playing it by ear. I mean, I have got a, li a few I a few solid concrete ideas and my sizes because obviously I've got to keep it in scale and this is going to be a five inch gauge uh, loco probably a shunter when I've finished and it'll be run by an electric motor which I've got on order and that's that's the only thing I've got to buy an electric motor and controller maybe just a few Odds and odds are items here and there as I, as I go along, but I'm building it mainly from unused items in my workshop and any scrap I've got. Um, so it'll have a motor in it eventually, r running onto one at uh, on, onto one at spindles, and then that'll be connected to next to other set of spindles via crank pins and, and a connecting rod here. Look. If you can see that, that'll be on outside. So where I'm up to now, I've managed to get a rolling chassis now, and it's it's completed. Uh, when I say complete, it's not actually complete, but it's a rolling chassis. I've still got to make a few a uh, few items like brackets for motor and things like that. Uh, but I just thought I'd update you with, with showing you showing you it finished into a, a rolling chassis and, and and what I've done. So what I'm going to do now, uh, I've just got to take this one of these axle boxes off. This one's just sticking a little bit and it wants a bit of a detailing doing to it. So what I'm going to do, I'll take this axle out. Just finish it off here where it's where it's snagging, and then I'll show you it going back together as I put it back together and how how I've done it. Right, I've done that bit of detailing work, and uh, one of my axle boxes were just snagging on one of on one of frames here where it slides in, and I've I've, I've managed to sort that out now, and it's it's um, I've got the wrong one there. It's, it's nice and free running now. So, I'll just explain to you what, what I've done. I think I've, I've given you dimensions in my, in, my, in my previous videos, but just roughly, I'll tell you again. It's it's two foot long. Uh, at the moment, the top plate's 12 inch wide. That might get reduced eventually when I've, when I've got it to, to scale I want. And I've just fabricated a, a frame uh, in, in middle seven and a half inch across to accept me my wheels that fit inside and uh, like I said it's a five inch gauge so the wheels that means the wheels on the rims there have got to be five inch to, to run on track and, and then what I've done here I've I've got some plates bolted on bottom uh, for my springs um, to ride on and there's four springs in each two springs in each corner four on each end 
Now I'm just I've just got to get some stronger springs for these. I don't think these are quite strong enough, so they're there just for representation at the moment. Uh, I know it might look it might I might be going a bit of a top here because I'm my spindles is five eighth diameter. Now I don't think it needs to be that big, but like I said, I'm I'm using what I've got in my workshop. The same with bearings. I've I've used heavy duty bearings. They, they don't really want to need to be that big. It's just what what I've got on stock. And then what I've done, I've got a phosphor bronze bush here. Not a bush, um, a thrust plate, which which rides onto onto to axle box, just to to keep my wheels away from frame. So, and then each corner I've numbered. This is this is number two and to keep ev everything in sets. So that because we've been fabricated, although it's fairly accurate, it might be ju it's just a few thou out here and there in each corner. So I've kept everything in sets and fitted them for each corner. Uh, and my wheels, they're made out of some four inch solid bar, which I had on stock. Uh, the four inch diameter on flange and the... Uh, three quarter inch wide overall so uh, I'll put this back together now and just explain to you what happens uh, each corner's got an axle box on and a wheel and a spacer a bronze spacer and each each corner is is numbered up sorry I've just got this that's it And then what happens is, they just slide in these grooves, in each axle boxes. This is two and a quarter wide by two inch deep, this axle box. And they just, all they do is just slide into frame, into chassis frame. I've got to get them lined up though because they're a fairly good fit. And then what happens, they drop onto them springs. it's lined up like so so that's my suspension now and like I said I want some I think I want some stronger springs but I'm just playing this by ear at the moment I'm not working to no drawings and then on each on each corner you've got your, your keeper plate for the axle box and that fits on each one on each corner to stop axle box from uh, escaping. And my wheel base, that's centre to centre on spindle. I've made it nine and three eighths, and then this is number four keeper plate for this side. When I go it right way around, that's it. So that's them secured. Everything's a bit tight, I've got no oil on it yet, so it'll be okay once it's oiled up. So I've got a rolling chassis now. Everything's welded up. Uh, what else can I tell you? I think that's it really. So what, what I'm going to do now is... I'm just going to... My next job is to make these uh, cranks now that that fit on on each of these and with a connecting arm, and that's what I'm going to do next. And I 
I've I've found a bit of aluminium. It's a good quality aluminium. This, uh, and I've cut four discs off, and I'm going to shape them to that shape to fit on that shaft on each one with connecting rod. So that's my next job. Uh, like I said, uh, I'm only a novice, so. <coughs> I'm doing this from a beginner's perspective really and I'm learning as I'm, as I'm going along. Um, I'm not working to no drawings like I said, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just picking ideas up and, uh, and making an uh, amalgamation of different ideas to start f with it for my first project just to use all my scrap items up in my, in my workshop. So I think that's everything really. Uh, it's now ready. Uh, I've just got to make some motor mountings. Uh, I ain't got my motor yet. That's on its way, and then that'll fit with a chain onto onto its spindle, and then my cranks all uh, and my connecting rods all joint spindles together. And then once I've got that done, it's basically ready for its first coat of paint under undercoat. And where I've joined my metal, my bits of metal together. I've just got to put a bit of filler in before I before I paint it, and then uh, everything will be everything will look okay then. So that's my rolling chassis anyway. And I think I need some stronger springs than that, which I've I've got uh, I've got in pipeline coming. So I'll update you when I've gone a bit further with this then and. Uh, And then uh, anybody that might be interested in doing it, will have a beginner's perspective, like on 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 what to do. So thanks for watching then, and I'll catch you. I'll catch you next time.